Hey Crafty Friend, it's me Justine and I have a new little tip and trick that I am going to try out today. I haven't used it yet but I have looked at uh, several people trying this either on Instagram or on YouTube here. I don't know who was the original idea for this so I can't really credit them but I've seen many people do this. So I'm going to try it out for myself. I have a piece of clear acetate. Now this one was <laughs> from a garage sale it was a overhead projector box and I bought them for shaker cards like three years ago so now <laughs> I'm gonna use it on my better press and it was just a piece of clear acetate like this <clears throat> and what I did was just add some washi tape to the edge so I could see the edge clearly you can see it is actually yellowing because this is a little bit old <laughs> anyway I put the washi tape side down. I mean, I do have a little bit of overlap here on the corners, but this is going to allow me to press faster and make more things because it's going to be an easier cleanup. And this is so thin that it won't really affect my press, as, as at least I think so. So I've gone ahead and added two pieces of tape here to get it set, and I'm going to be pressing with some new products from Spellbinders. Now this is new March. So this is almost the end of March now. And if you watched the live yesterday with Melanie and I, you're going to watch us make, or you have watched us made some things. The tense of this is a little awkward because I'm making this video on the 16th. So I'm making it a little bit in ahead of our live, but I have made several cards with this collection already. This is the Mirrored Arch collection. So I'm using some products from that collection in this video today. I've mixed and matched them with other collections that have come out this month, especially with Yana's collection, which is just stunning. I, I love it. So I'm just going to play around today. And if you haven't checked out that live with Melanie and I, you're going to want to go ahead and check that out. This time it was on my channel. So I will have the link to our live event in the description of this video. Again, when I'm filming this right now, it hasn't happened, but you know, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start with some paper here. I have some better press paper, and I'm gonna go ahead and position it in place. So I don't think the tape will affect anything here. You know, I think I will just sneak it on the corners just to be safe because I don't want to mix up any of my design here or here. Okay, so I always get my paper in place first, then I have my press plate. And I'm going to do several layers. So I figured I would do this card on camera because it is a little bit different of a technique and it's not just ink blending. So who knows, maybe I'll do this on my live as well. I don't know, we'll see. <clears throat> So this is the overall design that I'm going for my card. I'm going to use all the layers here. There are one, two, three, four, four mirror areas and then one sentiment. So let's start dark and go light. And I'm going to try with some blues and pinks because those are my jam. So I'm going to start with Cosmic Sky on the edge. And I just re-inked this one, so this should be super juicy and good to go. So if you're confused and wondering why in the world did you add that clear layer, it's really just for cleanup for my ink here. You can see if I didn't have that on there, I would have ink all over, which, yeah, that does happen. And <laughs> my press plate is been used it's been loved we'll just say it that way so that is a thing but it's fine for me I really don't mind that much I'm really more interested in pressing faster and getting a quicker turnaround in between changing colors so I'm just gonna run this through my platinum I have the eight and a half inch and it's just setting over here I always pop this out for my better press videos because when I, oh, I have a cord issue here. When I normally craft, I don't have my platinum sitting on my desk. When I move back into my craft room, 
whenever that is, I will probably be using a bigger desk so I'll have more room. Okay, there's my first layer. Now this is where I wanted to show you my technique. So to get everything lined up, there isn't registration plates for this one. First I'm going to add tape to the other corners because I can see it lifting. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my tool-in-one to help me out. Now if you don't have a tool-in-one, you can use another tool that can do the kind of the same thing. But I'm using the little scoopy part of the tool-in-one, but this is the key. I have to put my next piece on before I remove this one and that will help line everything up. So that's lined up. I'm gonna scoop. Oh, that just moved. I wish there was an undo button sometimes in life. Okay, well, we're just gonna hope for the best now. Oh, brother. Oh, sister. <laughs> oh my goodness. What I should have just done was that, lift that up. Okay, well now we have to just kind of hope for the best. I don't even know what to do. Okay. Fabulous. Maybe I can set it on there and flip it somehow. I feel like my last several videos have just been a little bit of a flop. Okay, I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to stick a rolly tape up top here. I'm going to put my platen on. Oh, no, that's what I can do. I can do it upside down. Okay, I'm going to stick this on top and press down, and hopefully the magnet picks up. Oh, no, that whole thing just moved. Okay. Okay, I gotta hold it. Holding the edges. Wow, that is a dirty on the back. Okay, pressing down. Oh, please work, please work. I'm gonna slide it, flip. Such a good tutorial. I think it's gonna work. I think it's gonna work, you guys. Okay. I'm just going to sneak it over just a little bit. Okay. I think we'll line it up with that line. What's the worst that can happen? I wreck it and then I use a die and make it work anyway. <sighs> okay. Moving on. Let's go teal topaz next. I really have been liking this color. So that's going to be the next one. Teal topaz. And I am going to just hold this in place so it doesn't wiggle. Sometimes the bigger pieces don't wiggle and the little ones do. This is kind of a, a medium sized one. I'm keeping the oops in because you know, you probably have similar situations sometimes. Okay, and we'll stick it in and we'll see if this is lined up. If not, I'll use one of the mirror arch dies that line up with this hole, if you will, and we'll save the card. There's always a way, a workaround, to make it work. Moment of truth, not bad. I'd say I'm fine with that. Okay, so now for this one, I need to be a little more cautious when I add my next layer. Okay, I'm gonna set this into the area and try to center it as best as I can. And then I'm gonna try holding this one down and displacing that one. And that should be good for my next press. All right, let's see. I think I'm gonna do Hydrangea next. I love having all these colors to choose from. It's just so exciting. And I'm excited to see how this clear thing clears off. I think it will be 
nice to not have to deal with cleaning all that off of my, my platen. All right, here we go. Third press. looking really good okay and now my last mirror piece let's get that in place oh that is just so dainty and cute be careful not to get too much ink on my hands but you know that's what we do as crafters okay that's in place I'm gonna hold down the new one, pop up the old one. That's getting easier. I think I think having this plastic is helping with the movement of the plates, but also it's gonna be nice to clean. Okay, my last layer, let's go, hmm, let's go coastal. I wish that was real. <laughs> I love Minnesota, but there's something about the ocean that is just really alluring. Okay, try not to move things around too terribly much. Press and pounds all around. I think that should be good, hopefully. And fourth press here we go <clears throat> ooh la la that looks fun okay I do like this okay and then should I do something bright in the center or should I stick with the blues I don't know maybe I'll do cruise in the next part. I think I will. You are the best. Yes, you are. Thank you for watching this video, by the way. I really do appreciate the support and I love doing card making and crafting, so the fact that I get to share it with you makes it extra special. So thanks for watching. Okay, I think that is as much as I can get. That was cruised, by the way. As much as I can get on there without moving it too terribly much. Run it through again. This is the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, fifth press. Now, if the other ones are crooked and the sentiment is fine, I think it's it's all good. Oh, and my sentiment's crooked. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a chance to use some embellishments to hide that. <laughs> Everything's a learning chance, right? Okay, well, I'm gonna set that off to the side for now because since I have everything up here for pressing, I'm going to get that all set. That is really pretty though, and you can see the impression that it leaves there. I hope you can. Ooh. Right there, you can see all that shadow. So that is really neat. That's why I do like the thick cotton paper. But overall, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Yes, my sentiment is off center, but with some embellishments, maybe some flowers, I can die cut out some flowers and that will be so gorgeous. Okay, setting it off to the side so it doesn't get ink anywhere I don't want it to. And what else can we play with from this? Oh, there's this one. There's also this plate. This one is called Mirrored Arch Blooms. I had a lot of fun with this one making some Mother's Day cards. And I think I'm going to make another one because why not? Oh, I should see how much ink there was on there. So you can see the blue. Can you see the difference? I hope so. I, I think that I will be doing this from now on. And then just wipe away any ink. Maybe just dab a little bit of that cleaner on. Still haven't gone through this bottle, which shocks me because I press a lot. <laughs> OK, 
okay clean enough okay now for this part I want to grab one of the sentiments from Yana's collection now the the better press ones that came with this collection are fabulous I love the press ones cut once which is this you're gonna press all of these you're gonna cut all of them I've made a whole bunch of them it's fabulous but I do want to nest this one in the center here so what I'm gonna do is grab well it does come with a sentiment but it's a birthday sentiment it says sending birthday wishes to an amazing friend usually moms aren't friends I mean I don't know you know there's that boundary there I love my mom but she's not not like my girlfriend so <laughs> okay Yana's collection had these beauties good grief can I even show there we go so there's happy birthday wishes happy Mother's Day let's celebrate happy anniversary I'm gonna grab that Mother's Day one and thankfully her collection has dies I'm not gonna use the die on this one today I'm just going to use the standalone Mother's Day press plate so now that I have my plastic on there I'll just center this up like so kind of center this one is so gorgeous I've done some watercoloring with this one I will show you at the end of this video what I've done with that this plate with watercoloring and this is going to be a landscape card so I'm going to put that on like that okay that seems right now for Mother's Day cards I've been going kind of bright so I'm gonna stick with that routine let's grab some better press paper and pop it in now my go-to combination has been azalea and apricot has been az azalea and apricot I think that those com that two combinations is just so gorgeous but I want to go something a little brighter. So I'm going to go Wildberry and Tiger. And I think that will give me something pretty bright. The Wildberry on first. Let's do that pink on the top. That will be fun. And then for switching up the colors, I kind of like to go... To the halfway points I use the black lines on the gray platen and go kind of halfway and then with the other color kind of mush it a little hopefully that kind of makes sense but I mean there's a little ink blending happening there but it's not enough to change the color of the pad so if you want to be really careful with that make sure that you go dark to light or light use your light first then go dark these two are pretty similar light and dark so I didn't really see a need to be cautious about that too much okay that's on there and now what color do I want for my sentiment I think that I will go let's go teal I've been grabbing that teal so often let's go something different how about French blue yeah that looks pretty I did get a little pink on there so I'm just gonna wipe it off I've used this one often <laughs> what I'm gonna do with this is ink it up and then position it after and sometimes with this you do get a little ink on the sides but if you are trying to be cautious of that you could do the layering like I just did before and you wouldn't have to worry about that but I'm not really concerned okay now to get this straight I'm gonna just go with the happy because I know the happy is straight and that's gonna be kind of lined up with that line here that's on my grid and then we'll run it through the platinum as usual and as that's going I'll try to multitask and put ink away I 
find that having my little inks right here makes it so much easier to kind of make with a clear-ish area. I mean, I'm not a clean crafter by any means, but ooh, that's pretty. I love it. Okay. And I do need to trim it a little bit, but that is just a-okay. Oh, that is really pretty. You can get kind of a close-up look. And I do love how it looks here where it's blending together. That look just seems very soft and pretty. Okay, what I'm going to do with this one is cut down some of the sides here. You can see it was off a little, so I need to do that. And then I'm going to grab some little flowers or gems or something to put here. And then I'll be right back once this is kind of cleaned up. And I have my ideas with those kind of set in stone. And of course, don't wait till... Don't forget to stick around to the end because I'm going to show you more cards that I made with this collection. So stick around. Let's see how inky this is, by the way. Not too bad. There's definitely some blue left over. So I'm just going to give this a quick clean before we move on. I think I'll be doing this. Like I said, this, this has been working pretty good today. And it was not even, like, it wasn't expensive. I had all these materials already, so double points for the cheap factor. Okay. Okay, I'm almost done with the second card here. And I pulled out some fun embellishments. These are so pretty, look at them. These are called Glossy Holographic Enamel Dots. These are from Trinity Stamps. And I'm gonna just sneak these onto the flowers and have them be the centers. And this will be the last finishing touch for this card. Now to just speak about the flowers really quickly these are these were flower dies from the spellbinders advent calendar from last year so 2023 and i loved pulling these out because they're a perfect flower to add to projects i've made a couple cards with these flowers and they're fabulous and then i pulled out some of the sequins for this one also from the advent calendar and added those to that card and I have now finished these two beauties so are you ready for all the rest of them I promised I'd show them to you so here here we go I should probably clean up these or at least get them off of the area so we can keep the video going <laughs> now like I said before if you want more content with this collection make sure you check out the live that Melanie and I just did last night and you can see more but here's another one where I blended some of the inks and got a really pretty result this is a birthday card of course and then here's another one where I did some more ink blending and then I used the Garnet and I think the Aqua and then Mulberry for the sentiment and made a Mother's Day card. And of course I had to go ahead and glimmer this fun 
press plate and then I pulled in the embossing folder from this collection and a Mother's Day sentiment to finish it off but that glimmer is just so stunning. I love it. And then I made a card that kind of matches that one. I glimmered with the black glimmer foil. You can see it's shiny there and use the embossing folder just to make some texture and then I embossed and not embossed. I glimmered the sentiment mom thanks for everything and then I chopped off the mom just to make another simple thank you card and then this one has to be my favorite this was a watercoloring one I am obsessed <laughs> this has been so fun I did this with the Tim Holtz pencils and the watercolor brushed pens from Spellbinders those have been growing on me to say the least so yeah, I've had a lot of fun. If you want to know more tips and tricks about watercolor, I have a few videos on my channel here about how to use those pencils, but I feel like that press plate is the perfect thing for painting. I mean, that is just so pretty. It could fall into this flower. Anyway, oh, that is all. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Got a little bit of tips and tricks about lining things up with the better press for the layers, especially with this one. And hopefully I encourage you to keep trying, even if you make something that isn't what you originally thought. I love this one even better now because I was able to shop my stash and grab those flower dies. And I might not have before. I might have just kept it simple and just had the better press on there. So it was just another opportunity. Oh, and I got to use my fun embellishments from Trinity Stamps as well. So that is all. Let me know what your favorite card in the video down below. And... I hope you have a great rest of your March. It's almost April, April 1st. Be on the lookout, a bolo. <laughs> and I am going to give a bolo out for the April clubs. They're really good. So just beware. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I can say right now. I have been itching to get to making with those and they've been looking at me I've been looking at them I've been looking at them on my spreadsheet and my to-do list and I can't wait to start playing with those so I'm gonna end the video now thanks for watching and we'll see you next time happy crafting hey wait before you go did you grab your weekender craft kit yet there is going to be a virtual event called The Weekender, and it is a virtual retreat, and you can pre-order your kit now. It is going to take place on May 17th through the 19th. There's going to be 10 hours of crafting with all of these amazing designers. So make sure that you grab your kit today. And Jennifer McGuire is also going to be joining us. So she was just added now today when I'm recording this. So she is not on this infographic here, but she is going to be there as well. So you're not going to want to miss it. There's a value there of $550. I mean, what? <laughs> so yeah, there's a ton of product. There's lots of dyes and some fun stencils and an embossing folder and a stamp set to tie it all together so it is on sale don't worry it's not actually five hundred dollars but the value itself of the kit and all of the classes is that so be sure to go ahead and follow the link in the description of this video so you can go ahead and join me and these amazing designers. I am extremely honored to be part of this group and I can't wait. So what are you waiting for? Grab your kit and come craft with us. Bye-bye.